Chaz is a man's man. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. He's a man's man. I come from a lineage of man's man. It's different when you are run man's man. The language is different. The right. swagger is different. The respect is different. The expectation is different. Things that don't matter to the average person is going to matter a little bit more to the man's man. There's certain things. You can't cross the line on certain right. things with them. There's certain things that's respect. Thoughts uh, uh, on uh, you with movies. Movies have a lot of power. Right. John Q was the first movie where I sat there and I said, man, that kid should have had a heart. Man, What are we going to do with this quarter million dollars that costs to get that heart? Like, what do we do with health insurance? There's, in, right. there's influence with movies, right? Last 20 years, men in movies are like, you know, b b presented as weak, fragile, pansies, softies, mm. you know, uh, being pushed around. You know, they're, they're a joke. They're a laughing stock. How much of this uh, uh, direction we're going and the way we're shaping and presenting how men are, are we losing the concept of man's man? Because today masculinity is a little bit frowned upon. Mm. Like if you're, you're too much of a man's man, it's kind of like, well, that's not respectful. Well, that's not this. And you become almost a target. Toxic so how does a man's man today um, survive in an era where it's frowned upon to be a man's man? I, you know what? It's, that's a good question, Patrick. Uh, but people, you know, women complain about chivalry, and, and I, I sometimes I would say, "Well, you're the one who killed it." <laughs> you know, don't complain about it. You know, I remember I was trying to, I, I was on a, I was on a plane, and the, and the woman, uh, she had her stuff there, and yeah. it, it was kind of she was struggling to get it off the yeah. top, and I, I said, "Excuse me," I, I said, "I'll get it for you, honey." I, I just meant, I said, "Honey," yeah, and she said, "Excuse me." I could do it, and I'm not a honey. I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. And she kind of yelled it, like, not yelled it, but people heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I was just, oh, okay, I'm sorry. And I was like, wow. I was trying to help her. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck, then. I, I didn't mean yeah. anything by that. I wasn't saying, hey, honey. I'll, I just said, no. oh, excuse me, honey, I'll, I'll get it for you. You know, as being a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, mm -hmm. like, jumped on my case. You know, I'm not your honey, yeah. and I could get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, wow. Well, you being in Hollywood, what's your take on the Me Too movement, feminism? Well, I'm, you know, I'm the curious to know if he goes deeper on that. Are you going to okay. go deeper on that? Because you're a pretty, pretty deep guy. Because I'm sitting there having a conversation, and I say, hey, ladies, can we do this? And we're at a restaurant. I say, hi, ladies. And one of the girls says, don't call me a lady. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, what can I call you? Right. You, you just can call me a woman. I'm a woman. I'm not a lady. I said, so I step back. I'm like, I'm trying to see why. I said, can I ask you, just for my yeah, own curiosity. Right. He says, mm -hmm. if I'm a lady, you're a lord. You're not a lord. I said, why? Oh, it's, man. Yeah, but there's it's, nothing you could say yeah, to that. Yeah, so, I mean, you got to so, walk away. Yeah, you, I, know, I did. I, yeah, I, went, you, I you walked when I had my food. Away. But the, the so, point is, you know, like, you... you you, uh, 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 it's almost, uh, you're a target today. That's all I'm saying. I, I, think yeah. I, feel, I feel bad for those people, though, Pat, because it, it's, a lot of it is coming from, like, internalized hatred and stuff that they don't, you know, it, it, it's a way for them. I don't I think it's them, internalized. You don't think so? No, I don't think this it's internalized. This is a way for them to feel powerful in ways that they don't you, feel powerful. And they're, they're you know, I'm just imagine having to go through life and everything has to be filtered through the lens of how can I make this about me. How can I make this about this offends me? You you should have known this would that's offend taught. me. Like, no, that's taught, bro. I, I'm sorry, I can't buy that. I think that is taught. There's a, we spent an hour and thirty minutes so far in this podcast talking about the value of somebody teaching you good or bad principles. Mm -hmm. And then he said 100% is parenting. I says I don't know if it's 100% parenting. Let's say it's 90% parenting. Let's put the number on whatever ratios we yeah. want to use. I think that is taught through a generation, and you think it's normal. It's very simple. It's taught, and I, I have a, I'm having a hard time with that because for my kids, you know, one, you know, one of my kids, uh, something happened was a bully, and they said, yeah, the, in, in school, we're, this one school they were going to, in school, the, Daddy, they're telling us even if somebody hits you, never hit back. So I said, yeah, really? Yeah. I said, listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to call your teacher. So I called the teacher, and I went and met the school. I went and had everybody there. I said, so here's what I'm being told. I just want to manage the expectation because we have to be on the same page. Because, you know, as teachers and uh, parents, we're on the same team. We're trying to raise good citizens, right? I says, yeah, of course. Yes, fa fantastic. I said, so this kid is bullying my son, okay? He's being told to just come and tell you guys. So he's being taught to snitch, which is fine. Okay, but I'm just trying to understand this. I said, is that what feedback he's being told? Yes. Now, what is the limit of uh, limitation you guys have here for how much he has to accept bullying until he punches back? No, we don't tolerate that. I said, okay, so we have a challenge here. I says, what's that? So because my kids come home, 
And my kids are instructed that if somebody bullies you, respectfully you tell them to stop, okay? And you address it. And then if it happens continuously, you have to punch him in the face. <laughs> that's a specific instruction. Now, somebody may disagree with the sense that that's no. not the right way to do, right? You have to do in every possible way to avoid conflict. But you got to stand up. you got to stand up. And then they're going back and forth. Well, that's not the right way of parenting. I said, I'm sorry. I'm not going to raise little pansies. Yeah. I, because, here, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. When I went after my parents got a divorce and I lived in Germany and there was no father figure, and it was me, my sister, and my mom, and they're both attractive, yeah. the world is an ugly world. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be soft, they're going to devour you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you want me to raise kids that are going to be bullied the rest of their life? Yeah. Hell to the effing no. It's not going to happen, right? So that's the part where I'm asking because, you know, like imagine if your son hangs out with them for three months. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. No, honestly, I want you to actually think, but you got a kid, he hangs out with Chas for three months. What yeah. do you think happens to your son? <laughs> he comes smooth. Forget about being smooth. Yeah. He's going to learn the right way to he's, act. He's, he's going to learn yeah. values and principles of what yes. it is to be a sure. man, right? Absolutely. That's the challenge I'm having. I, I, I don't right. know if you have any I thoughts am, on I am that. So, no, I, I am so proud of my son. I have a son, Dante, who's 25 years old. 6'2", like you know me, drop-dead handsome, built. Stud. Fud. He could fight. I, I taught him how to fight just like my dad taught me how to fight since he's three years old. Like I box or box. what? Dante no. versus Jake Paul right here no, no, on no, no, Value Tamer. No, no. My son is – when we get off camera, I'll show you some things. My son could fight. and he could, and he and, But you know what? I always told him. I always said to him, Dante, when he was young, I'm teaching you how to fight so you don't fight. Remember that. I know that. My son is a stand-up, graduated Berkeley. He'll, he'll walk away. But let me tell you something. But if you push it, he will, he will put you out. He will MMA, you know, the whole yeah. thing. But you, all you have to do is build a reputation once. Yes. You have to. You have to teach a person to fight. You have yeah. to. If I have a son, if I had another son, I would teach him. And, I, and my grandfather taught my father. My father taught me. I taught my son. And my son will teach his kids. Now, Not just a boy, a, a girl too. No, and that's, that's what I was going to ask. On the other side of it, you guys are both fathers to daughters. So if somebody comes up, some, like somebody at school made an unwanted advance on your daughter and she came home, Dad, how do I handle it? What are you, ta what are you telling her? Well, I, I wanted to go to someone and tell them and see how they handle it, just like Patrick did. Mm -hmm. If they handle it the right way and say, hey, you did it once, you never do it again. Because if you do it, you're going to get expelled. Yeah. Then his boy doesn't have to worry. But if this boy keeps doing it and they mm -hmm. keep telling this kid you can't do anything back, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. That's, I grew up. Where a guy was a bully, yeah, you want to be a bully? Boom, let's go for it. Yeah, uh, you know what? It stopped. It was over. No mm -hmm. more bullying. Fights in the school. Yeah, it only takes a couple times. The world, the, yeah. the world is an ugly place. People feed off you. You gotta, and if they see weakness, they keep it up. Mm -hmm. They keep it up. I had a thing a year ago. I don't get into fights anymore. I have two. I have two off-duty cops that travel everywhere with me, and they'll, they'll stop it. But this one guy, I was sitting, standing at the bar. And he came over to me, he goes, he goes, yeah, you were here three weeks ago, I saw you. You remember me? And I, and I did remember him, because I was with a table, and he walked over and said, hey, I love your movies. And I said, thank you. And he pulls up a chair and sits down. I mean, you don't do that. And I said, excuse me, I'm, I'm with a party here. I, I thank you that you love my movies, but I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm with people. And he got up and left. So then three weeks later, he sees me, he comes, he goes, yeah, you dissed me last, what, a few weeks ago. I said, I what? He goes, you diss me. I go, I, look, I was with a party, and you came over. I'm sorry. You know. He goes, yeah, well, I didn't like that. And I could feel my, the guy who was with me holding my arm, my, one of my bodyguards. And he goes, wait. I go, I, I told him, just wait a second. I said, look, if I did do something, I apologize. I'm very sorry. I, didn't, I don't think I did, but if I did, I truly apologize. And he said, yeah, well, you know what? That's not enough. And I says, well, then I don't know what to tell you then. And he was a big guy, you know. And then he leans over to me at the bar, and he says, you know, I'm a fucking tough guy. He says this to me. So now, all of a sudden, I went way back in the street. I went, <laughs> all of a sudden, I said, okay, I know what I'm dealing with now. I said, that's good. I said, because I'm a fucking tough guy too. So what do you want to do? And he looked at me, looked at me and went, Come on, I'm key. And he went, I'm just teasing. You know. Hey, man, no, I really love your movie. I, you know, I said, all right, we're cool, man. And he walked away. 
He pushed me to the point where I had to show him, hey, man, you want to play? Make your move. Let's go. Until I did that, until I did that, mm-hmm. he would have kept going. Yeah. How long ago was this, by the way? Three about weeks a year ago. ago. A year ago. <laughs> a year ago. No, I thought he said three weeks now, ago. You, you brought yeah. up, uh, you, you reminded me of a story, wow. man. It's about I was a year in, ago. Um, respect, Chaz. No, no, it, but it's not, it's just, come on, guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah, do everything you can to avoid the fight. You know, in the school, you hope to have a law and order where it doesn't even come to you. Some schools do great, but the kids are going to the school right now. We had an incident. They didn't even make it up to me that I, need, I didn't need to go to school. They handled it themselves. See, yeah. see I, 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 was, I was taught wrong, man. <laughs> like, you guys are right, but I was taught wrong. My, uh, I'll never forget, I was in first grade, and uh, there was a kid named Matt, and he was, uh, he was, he was kind of a bully. My mom was a, the lunch, uh, what, what were they called? Like, they come and they like. The lunch lady? Yeah. It wasn't a lunch lady, but yeah. they like. Uh, lunch lady land? Wasn't a lunch lady. They like. Uh, Cafeteria worker? No, they like chaperone during recess or whatever. Like, uh, whatever. So this, the, the guy calls him out. He, my mom tells the kid to st- stop doing what he's doing. He was like pinching a girl or something like that. My mom was like, Matthew, stop. And he goes, shut up, bitch, to my mom. And wow. I was like, oh, like you don't do that to my mom. Like my mom's a warrior woman, dude. Like, oh. And then I come home. My dad's never home. He worked in the city. He was home at 8 o'clock at night. When I come home, my dad's waiting for me at home. He goes, hey, did Matt call your mom a bitch today at school? I was like, yeah, I can't believe it. He goes, what'd you do? I was like, oh, nothing. I, he was like, okay, this is what you're going to do. As soon as you get off the bus tomorrow, you're going to walk up to Matt. You're going to punch him in the face. You're going to keep punching him until you can't punch anymore. And I'm like, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. He goes, you're allowed to do that. Go do that. So first thing, I get off the bus in the morning, I go, and I punch this kid, I beat, I beat the living crap out of him, I'm crying while I'm on top of him the whole time. I obviously get dragged to the principal's office. The principal's like, what the heck was that about? I was like, ah, he called my mom a bitch. So my dad's there, obviously called out of work. <laughs> He's there. He goes, Gerard, I am so disappointed in you. This is not how, I'm like sitting there like shocked, like, what the, f- <laughs> what just happened here? He comes out and he goes, hey, free day off. And he pounds me. We go get ice cream. He takes me to a Yankee game that night. <laughs> he was like, "Look, man, sometimes there's a, there's a sometimes. part of, there's a part of that that's not he, he, that your dad didn't do you wrong there. There's a no. part of that that's kind of like, you know, he he taught you to protect your mom and your two sisters. You got two yeah. sisters, yeah. right? Probably yeah. was a better way to go about it. No, I'm not saying. Listen, there's no, the one thing about parenting that sucks is there's no freaking manual. You know, you <laughs> you can say the Bible, yes, yes. There's a, but there's not a manual that says. If this thing happens, what do you do? Go to page 396 to see seven steps on how to handle this. You kind of got to freaking go off the cuff. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.